So now, as we go forward into this process of how do we operate, what do we do, how do we represent ourselves? I had already worked with the U.S. federal government on the Underground Railroad study. And through doing this, I found out there was such a thing as a federal study to examine the importance of something to American history. Hmm. And then the government was supposed to acknowledge it, then protect this thing and teach about it. So I said, why y'all can't do something similar for my area? I said the entire coast from North Carolina to Florida, northeastern Florida, is us. We have history, we have culture, we have sites, we have areas. Why don't you do this and protect all of it so that we will be there for the future generations? Well, they said, well, hold it, it don't happen just like that. <laughs> <coughs> I said, well, tell me how it happens and let me get on it. They said, well, you're going to have to first convince a congressional representative mm -hmm. that your culture is worth this. And if you can manage that, they looking at me like, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you can manage that and you get them to sponsor a bill, you got to get the bill passed by Congress. And we don't know if they know who y'all ghoulas are. I said, by the way, that's government. And I said, but if they don't know, what they need to do? You better, you better find out. That's somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm the somebody. I help you out. So it wasn't hard. Divine intervention is a powerful thing. Once I made the connection to Congressman Clarkson, and it was simple. Guess why? He's married to a Dolly Dichy woman. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to explain to him the changing pattern. He knew it for himself. So he said, well, he was doing something else. He started the South Carolina National Heritage Corridor. So he thought, why not take the model of that corridor, take the model of the Underground Railroad Network, the freedom we got, kind of blend them together, and let him put forth some legislation. But he knew he couldn't get to that step unless the federal government first said you could do a study. So I said, well, let's get the study going. Wrote up this legislation, started doing this work. Now, while they're doing what they're doing, like your brother said, you don't stop what you do. Mm -hmm. All right? So I let him do what he does. Now, interestingly enough, the legislation he wrote took us six years to get it passed. First three years, they were not trying to hear him. They ain't know nothing but no bullets. They don't know what you're talking about. Leave us alone. But when it got ready to go to the next session, the next time, this was when I was already connected to Iraq. I had been told before I left, that bill don't look like it's going nowhere again. The bill ain't moving. All of a sudden, I come back. I'm getting calls and emails. You know, your bill is moving. Your bill is moving. I said, oh, really? That's good. <laughs> Folks I know work in the government start seeing me places. They said, oh, mm -hmm. heard you left the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Suddenly, everybody on Capitol Hill know Gullah Geechee is wonder why he ain't him. And they can walk off. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, that's how it go. Because I went to the UN and spoke. I guess they were like, uh oh, you do a lead. <laughs> Bring them on back here. Bring them on back here. Tell them we're working on it. <laughs> and sure enough, they were working on it. So the second session finally passed, even though they thought it wouldn't. The very night of the close of that session, they voted on it and passed it. But watch what they acknowledged. This study took another three years for us to get it done. When it culminated, they put in there, Gullah Geechee culture is distinctive mm. and is not yet represented and protected as an entity in the national park system or by any other agency. Mm -hmm. We didn't write it. Mm. Federal government wrote that. Mm. So if we're not, that was the reason I went to the UN. We're not protected. I said that. So y'all just repeating what I said? What you gonna do now? That's my question. So, Congressman Clyburn said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draft another bill. And it's going to be called the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Act. Well, no, he said the Gullah. I said it's going to be Gullah Geechee. That's right, Queen. I got you. I got you now. Because see, by this time, I've been in school and elected by my people. He said, I got you. Mm -hmm. He said the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Act. Mm -hmm. 
and he had to run it on two tracks, as he called it, to get it passed, but it passed. Mm -hmm. And it was actually signed into law by President George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. that's and I remember the day, that's the divine order, I remember the day that I got the call to say, Queen Quick, guess what? I said, what? So what's going on up there now? They said, your bill is on the way to the president's office. Mm -hmm. I said, so what, I got to get the plan now? What I got to do? Because I told y'all I want to be there when the person signed because I want the pit. They said, no, no, hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> they ain't doing a signing ceremony. I said, what? <laughs> they said, yeah, that's called a signing ceremony. They ain't doing all that. He just going to sign. I said, so in other words, y'all sliding it on his desk with a bunch of other stuff that we all <laughs> Get off my phone and you call me back when the ink dries and it doesn't disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very serious about that. I got the call back the next day and said it was signed. So it is now federal law. There is an act of Congress called the Double Beach Culture. Y'all know this story because y'all helped to write letters and support and all of that. And y'all did it. We had to be collective. And so here it is that even with that act, why I mentioned to you this piece at the beginning that talked about tribal peoples and indigenous peoples is because in all these years of going to the United Nations, I'm now not only going to the Commission on Human Rights and then the Minority Forum, as you heard, but also the Indigenous Peoples Forum. And I have found that in every one of those forums, they consider us both Indigenous people and minorities, and we have been told that as Gullah Geechee, you can use all of these forums to your benefit because of the way you are defined on an international level, not based on how the U.S. might define it. So that helped me. I'm a country girl. Whatever well, the tool kit out the shed, if we got to use it, mm. go get it. Need the right tool for the job. So I continue to read. All right, breaking the law, 1740. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that. I, I come across a document called Indigenous and Tribal People's Rights in Practice. And it was something done as a guide to the ILO Convention, number 169. It says the very language, and what I, what I used here was I looked back at what else that, what was called the Low Country Gullah Special Resource Study and Final Environmental Impact Statement, mm. what now we just call the SRS or the Gullah Study or the Low Country Gullah Study that the National Park Service did for that three years. And it's a document that's online. You can get it from the National Park Service website. I went back and they wrote this also. The Gullah Geechee people of the Low Country and the Sea Islands of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, and North Carolina are a distinctive people. They are also the only African American population in the United States with a separate, long standing name <coughs> identifying them as a separate people. They are distinct among African American peoples in this development of a tradition that depends as much upon the maritime resources mm -hmm. as upon the land resources. Mm -hmm. Historically, they are speakers of the only true African-American Creole language of the continental United States. Mm -hmm. Gullah Geechee people are the most African of African-Americans in physical type, language, and culture. Yet, they are a uniquely American cultural type formed by the fusion of African cultural heritage and the American experience. And what an experience it's been. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at this, and as I wrote the paper that I already presented that will be published, no doubt, by Clarity Press, <laughs> um, I put this in there. The very language used seems to coincide with those of the provisions within Article 1.1a of the ILO Convention Number 169 in regard to tribal people, and that tribal people are seen there as, quote, having social, cultural, 
and economic traditions different from other sections of the national community, identifying themselves with their ancestral territories and re regulating themselves, at least partially, by their own norms, customs, and traditions. According to the ILO, the objective elements of tribal peoples include, number one, culture, social organization, economic conditions, and a way of life that are different from other segments of the national population. For example, their livelihoods, their language, etc. Number two, distinctive traditions and customs and or special legal recognition. I'm at a university, can y'all help me out? If I just read to y'all from federal law and federal documents, doesn't that? Okay, isn't it? All right. Fact, so isn't that a legal de facto legal recognition? Legal recognition. By the United States. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Just wanted that confirmed that I wasn't misunderstanding. Because, you know, English is my second language. <laughs> <laughs> Let us move on. The history professor himself, Congressman James. Wrote on August the 7th, 2002, about my island, St. Helena Island, South Carolina. He said, I have talked about the legal device called partitioning, which is used to rob blacks of their property. Mm -hmm. These tactics are employed when property owners die without wills and the land is passed on to their heirs with unclear deeds. So if a buyer can convince just one of the heirs to sell his or her share, mm -hmm. the buyer can file a legal partition and gain title to the entire parcel. Mm -hmm. I understand that now legal partitioning has ever failed in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it appears that once again, the legal system will be used to deprive blacks of their rightful ownership. This is happening to slave descendants throughout the South. As the land is lost, so too is the Gullah culture that once dominated these islands. I have secured federal funding for the National Park Service to study ways to prevent future loss of this important cultural heritage. However, that report due out in a year will focus on preservation and not legal reforms that are necessary to prevent this situation on St. Helena Island. And he could have said, or anywhere in the Gullah Geechee Nation at that point. All right? But he wrote it. He acknowledged this in writing. He continues, there is a place where the Gullah culture thrived, they could thrive because its purveyors live without any pressure to assimilate for generations. This is the place where history was so intertwined with its people that 47 descendants of slaves sought to protect it in a natural state for eternity. And he then is talking about the Woodlands Club property only. And he's talking about all the other hundred and something other Gullah Geechee families on St. Helena. It is heart-wrenching to know that the very legal system charged with protecting the rights of all Americans is being used to strip blacks of their rightful property ownership. Mm -hmm. If allowed to continue, <coughs> The rich history and heritage that makes St. Helena so unique may be lost to future generations. Now, fortunately, because he did his job where he could do his job, and I kept on doing my job where I could do my job, we have collectively come to a point in time where we have this other federal legislation, the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Act, that passed, as I said, in 2006, four years after he wrote that letter while the study was going on. Fortunately, St. Helena Island is still 90 to 95% Gullah Geechee mm -hmm. St. Helena does not have a police force. They don't have no police department. Mm -hmm. Every time people come on my tours, I not usually black folk, but I always get some Anglo person that says, Queen Quick, um, one thing we didn't notice during the tour, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, what they didn't notice now? Plantation house or the police department? Because <laughs> those are usually the two things they say they didn't notice. And it's usually the question is, do y'all have a police department? The last young lady asked me that a couple months ago was from George Washington University. A group of them came to work in the community with us at the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition. And she said, well, Queen Quet, do you not have a police department on the island because you police yourselves? I said, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Dead on. We police ourselves. So when the brother said, wherever there's a large population of our people, you have police brutality and violence, I said, not where I'm at. Well, I'm going to tell you, I said that. <laughs> okay? In fact, the police are afraid to come on say hello. Mm -hmm. Y'all are joking. But the police are afraid of us. I mm -hmm. remember we discussed yesterday identity issues. You have to identify who you are. Then live who you are. Mm -hmm. And if Hunter said, Hunter, they're going to get you. Hunter can't be one of we and you ain't know nothing but the water and the thing like that. Mm -hmm. And rather was the land. I said, mm -hmm. Hunter, I'll join up get something for me for a cold, and you you going to cut down the bush? That don't work. You know? <laughs> so there are a lot of things that tie into what we have done in the Gullah Geechee Nation in terms of utilizing various instruments of human rights law and using all of them looking at them as a toolkit, and then pulling out the tool for the appropriate job. And that's why I'm even here today, because y'all know I ain't trying to be in no 50 degree weather, whatever y'all got it. And I'm not in 80 degrees at, at home. But I see you there. Right. The reason, the reason I'm here, I'm just telling I'm you the truth. The reason I'm here is because this is important to me. This is at my heart. And I did not need Uncle Clyde waking up, slapping me in my head, talking about, hey, how come you ain't in Chicago? All right? Mm -hmm. Because he and I always talked about the statement by Frederick Douglass that power can cease nothing, nothing without, without a demand. demand. It never, never has, has and never, never will. will. So mm -hmm. that's why today I had to take you on this journey, mm -hmm. hopefully through what I call a myriad of myths and forced migration meets self determination. Because there were so many myths about Gullah Geechee and why you should stay away from us and stay off them islands. And then people practice funny stuff. Then people mm -hmm. talk funny. And all of that, they kept you all away from us. So this is the opportunity for me to be right here. Honey, yeah, me to crack the people all this year. They ain't like an angry city. You ain't no. You ain't no. You ain't no. You ain't no. No, no. The major threats in 1999 to us was lack of identity as Gullah Geechee. Mm -hmm. People were Gullah Geechee, but they wouldn't say it. Mm -hmm. Not out loud. Mm -hmm. The second thing was land loss and displacement. Mm -hmm. All right. The third thing was forced assimilation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the fourth thing was the lack of knowledge on instruments of legal recourse. Mm -hmm. People just didn't know what to do, where to go to get help. They didn't know. Today, our major threats are attacks forwarded by the assimilated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The continued cultural exploitation. Our area now is being advertised as the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, the Gullah Geechee Endangered Coast mm -hmm. by the National Trust for Historic Preservation and National Tour Park Service tourism to encourage board. tourism. Tourism mm -hmm. is what caused our displacement in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now they're going, there's a book called Rena Negro. Mm -hmm. They're using that as a model because Gullah Geechee's who are self-determined will not take $50 and go in a plantation, and when I say plantation now, I don't mean the gated areas for the golfing. I mean the actual plantation, the tours, like Sister Muhammad talked about that she took, and go in there and then sing or do storytelling. All right? Especially during February. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they get African Americans who are willing to come to the area mm -hmm. and will do it. Mm -hmm. Or they get Sierra Leonean Africans and bring them, mm -hmm. and they say, well, they mm -hmm. part of y'all too, right? And then they get them to go to the rice plantations, and they'll just drum. And they'll cook pots of rice outside, mm -hmm. and the tourists can come look at them. Mm -hmm. See, I don't do drive-by tours, I tell people. <laughs> this is not a safari. Mm -hmm. So when you come on a tour led by the Gullah Geechee Nation, the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition, you will interact with the community. It is about education and economic development. Right. So when you get off, you don't drive through. You stop at Gullah Geechee stores. We take you by Gullah Geechee elders who make crafts, who make cast nets by hand, mm -hmm. boats by hand, dolls by hand. Then we cook you the food right, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Way you want. I told Farming earlier, somebody sampled Dan Brown. What you need? What, what, what you need? need. I've got what you need. Y'all y'all ain't college students, so y'all can't get with me. But if they were here, they would know what I'm talking about. Right, Brother Chan? You know what's mm -hmm. So we come with you. You say, you tell us what it is you're coming for. We connect you to it. But now, the cultural exploitation is taking the form of, if we hire somebody that looks black and they'll entertain, we'll say they're going to get you. Mm -hmm. Even if they can't speak Gullah, mm -hmm. but as long as we set them up in Charleston or set them up downtown Beaufort or something, we'll mm -hmm. say they're Gullah Geechee. Mm -hmm. All right? And then 
the decrease in internal non-market traditional economic empowerment and development mm -hmm. that happens as a result of that. Sweet because now baskets. you have a funnel where you're competing with the national parks <laughs> to make sure money comes actually to the other YouTube people. All right? And then and the bed and breakfasts and the chambers of commerce and all of them who setting up their own stuff. Mm -hmm. And then just marketing it with a sweet grass basket on the cover of their brochures. Mm. Um, and then the other one is externally financed and promoted attempts of disunification. Mm. What has happened on the coast is that there are some people who want so bad to just get their face in the paper or get put in a magazine that if we call a meeting and say it is about self-determination, say it is about nationhood, they can't show up. Mm -hmm. But they can email me and say, Queen, you know you got my support. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Or they walk by you. Good job, Queen. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? But those are the same people, when they then hear because the grapevine works well in the Gullah Geechee Nation. The drums still work. When they hear, y'all know where Queen Grant came back from the other day? Well, she been to UN again, in it? <laughs> yeah, oh, she been to the White House. What? Yeah. You know, I think Queen and Obama go back. She been to the White House. <laughs> go back to the Jefferson uh, Award. I'd have been happy if you were happy when I was at the Black House, but it's all right. I come back from the White House and say, Just like that, because I know what they're getting at. I want them to ask me a direct question. Mm -hmm. well, I heard you were with the president. I said, and what else is new? Because mm -hmm. I know what they're coming for now. They figure, oh, maybe she's not too radical. <laughs> and she got advice to the White House. Uh, but she be talking about this stuff we don't know what it is. Human rights is the problem. Our people have been taught. It's not your right to discuss human rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our people have been taught that somebody gives you rights the right. other than God. Mm -hmm. Our people have been taught that anything that says international, they ain't got nothing to do with you. You got to survive right where you at and you were with them people over yonder. That's how they think of international. Mm -hmm. But if I pose to them, you want people to keep your land and take your land? No! We will do it if we come do it. Oh, I broke them up. They ain't going to take my land. Well, why you want your land so bad? Because I grow my own food. Oh, yeah, and why? What big deal? You grow your food so. We you fool, Eddie? If I grow mm. my food, I ain't got to go in that people's store and buy them food. I ain't know anybody's got in the thing. <laughs> Dad, mm. no, I want something else for going on. I got my board right there. I go in the creek yonder. My uncle yonder. Amen. So, I think when we start to get into identifying who we are, then we know whose we are, we can then get others to follow us. Because when you don't know who you is, mm -hmm. ain't nobody need to be following behind you because you know us already. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a very key point, and we just have to admit that fact. 
And so with the Gullah Geechee Nation, we came to the world in 2000 and said that we were declaring ourselves as a nation. Our mission was clear, and we still hold to it, to preserve, protect, and promote our history, culture, language, and homeland, and to institute and demand official recognition of the governance, the minority rights necessary to accomplish our mission, to take care of our community through collective efforts which will provide a healthy environment, care for the well-beings of each person, and economic empowerment. We have not given up on this declaration. We have not given up on the use of any of the tools you hear me say, and nor will I give up an invitation, whether it's to the White House, the Black House, the UN, to hear if it's an opportunity to work with people who want to collaborate on working to help the world be a better place for all people so all our culture can be recognized and we can stop having to come up in here and dialogue with one another and we can just get together underneath the oak tree with some good old fish fry wine and some drum speed. So Hunter Chilla, I say to you again on behalf of our Minister of Information of the Gullah Geechee Nation, Elder Carly Town, who especially sends her greetings to you, Sister Diane, and to everyone here and to Brother Perez, she definitely wanted to give you greetings and let you know she's back there holding it down while I'm holding it up here. And I say to all the hundred children, as my elders taught me, Oh no, don't turn back. Oh no, don't turn back. Oh no, don't turn back when I make the leadership. Great. their rights mm -hmm. and with all due respect to every other African American here mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. room that sets you apart and that is the problem it shouldn't be the problem but, that is, yeah. but that's <coughs> what sets you apart mm -hmm. and not only is this uh, self-determination mm -hmm. what you're doing mm -hmm. but you're exercising de facto sovereignty right. over your mm -hmm. own land, mm -hmm. exactly. which is even more than what we are discussing here, here. Mm -hmm. for African Americans. Mm -hmm. So here we're talking about self-determination for African Americans. How do we achieve that? Right. You're beyond that. Mm -hmm. You're now at the stage of de facto sovereignty, sovereignty. over land and exercising self-determination. Mm -hmm. and, and so with all due respect to everyone here, mm -hmm. You're at that next thing. Right. Mm -hmm. and